Well, good day, Bulldogs. I'm Dr. Reynolds, and here yet with another outreach video. This time, it's a special topic, but all relative to the importance of the relationship between our students, our staff, and our families at home. Even more specifically, the presence of our fathers and strong male role models in the lives of our children. Today, I'm joined by some strong male role models to talk about a brand new Top Dog Initiative. So welcome to everyone. And even though we are here to learn more about our Top Dog Male Role Model Initiative, I am very excited to learn more about the guests and their involvements. Before we begin, we want to welcome everyone to the Cleveland Browns State in the Game Room here at Maple Leaf Elementary. Attendance is so important. And for the past few years, attendance has been a nationwide problem. And the Cleveland Browns have partnered with us to give our students an initiative to be here at school in this room at Maple Leaf is just one of the ways that we are doing that. Chomps has been here uh, to our back to school rally and we have had visits from Browns players and they have donated backpacks and many other things to our students. So we are so appreciative to the Cleveland Browns and their investment into our community, helping us to support every child every day together. Now, speaking of investments into our community, I want to introduce our guests to start. So, so gentlemen, uh, talk to us a little bit about yourselves, your names, and what building your children are in. Okay, my name is Richard White, and I'm actually part of the Village Church, which is a new church plant that's gonna be here in Garfield. And we definitely understand the importance of the faith-based community working with the schools. So I don't have a child in particular in, in the um, district, but I do care and love the kids. So I wanna be a part of what this initiative is about. Uh, good afternoon, uh, my name is Pastor Mario Hauser. I'm the pastor of the Village Church. Um, and again, I don't have a, a child in the district anymore. My, my kids are grown. Um, so all the kids I look at are kind of mine. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, we, we look to just infuse uh, presence and opportunity um, to meet all of our young scholars uh, so we can help them uh, get on the path in which they need to be on. Good. Um, hello, my name is Desmond Halley. My son goes to Elmwood Elementary, I believe. And um, basically, I just started out going up there with him. I, I have a presence from my mother and my father where um, I see a lot of parents drop their kids off. And I, from my mother and father's standpoint, they always walked us to school. They never really left until they seen us go inside of it. So I implemented with my kids and um, they started to a point where I started to go out there and interact with my son because I work late nights. So I really don't get the chance to interact with him during that day sometimes. And I work five days a week, 12 hour shifts. Um, so I, the days I'm off, I go up there and play football with him. And I start noticing um, other kids would take liking to it. When I uh, first used to come up there, they used to be scrambling around, running all over the place. And uh, now it's more so they, when we're coming up there, they wait on us. We play for the uh, duration of them before they about to go inside the building. It is always fun now, you know. Um, I started out doing it just rambling with my son. I never thought it'd get to the point where the other kids would interact with it, but it's a positive enlightening on them, I believe, because uh, I seen them go from, like I said, uh, playing around, tussling and fighting sometimes to now it's some structure and order. Even when uh, I'm not there, on the day, some days I don't come up there all the time. They're still interacting and doing that now. So I can tell that it took some positivity on. Good. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon. My name is Damon Loretz, and uh, I'm the assistant principal at Elmwood Elementary School where his son attends. Thank you so much. I know there are a list of questions that I'm supposed to go through, but um, I, I really have some things that I, I want to just kind of talk about. Number one, let's talk a little bit about the importance of the presence of a male role model for our students. How, how important is that and why is that so important? Um, it, it's important in my estimation because um, they get to see an example. We have to set an example on in particular how to behave, you know, how to interact with one another. You know, I often say that, um, you know, it, um, environment shapes culture. And so we need to be able to create an environment where 
you know, these guys can express their culture, who they are, but do it in a way that's both positive, uplifting, and, and can move the environment and the culture forward. So, um, and education is a big part of that, right? And, and so, um, yeah, yeah, I think that's, uh, that's my estimation on it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I think positive uh, male role models are important because there's so many other influences in the world on our kids. Um, whether it be social media, whether it be the music, whatever the case may be, that are sending messages um, counter, counterproductive to, to, to um, our students being as uh, positive as they can be, right? Or successful as they can be. So when you, when you have a, a male role model who is, um, is positive, is engaged, is involved, um, what you tend to see, um, and what I think our, our hope is that we tend to see is that they tend to model that while still understanding culture and what exists in the culture, but they, they st they're, they're like, yo, like, this is really the path forward for me. Um, because they see, you know, the superintendent, they see the principal, they see the dads and whatnot. And so they say, all right, you know, while I may like the music, while I may like the culture, the reality of it is, this is the path forward best for me. So having that in place is just, I think, is um, gonna be the, one of the top things um, for, for our young people today. Um, I'm basically going to piggyback off of them. Uh, I think it's very important because, once again, when I was growing up, what I looked up to was my father and my uncles and them. We really, I mean, I, I seen athletes and watched them and all that. But in reality, I looked up to the people who were more so around me rather than the ones that wasn't. And uh, it built me up into the man I am today. So I feel like that old school, gritty, tough love is really important, especially with parents and fathers mainly because I feel like that is fading away now to the point where the child is just raising themselves. Mm. Um, for myself, um, being an employee working in the school, um, <clears throat> a lot of events, uh, a lot of mothers, grandmothers, um, aunts, godmothers, um, the male population is not as, as much. So even when um, I need to contact a parent and I go and look on the computer, mother's names and um, just being you know male myself I know that uh, the male presence is absent in a lot of our children's households so I'm um, just trying to govern myself accordingly like you said being an example a role model because they the, the, the kids especially you know the little boys they want to be uh, NBA players or NFL players or they want to be a rapper you know and just trying to give them a push, like, okay, you know, you need something to fall back on, you know, go to college and get your education and, you know, just things like that. So, um, absolutely a, a, a great thing, um, trying to uplift, you know, the, the male uh, gender, having it more, you know, prevalent in the schools. So the thing is, we, we want to make sure that we are dream builders. You know, and, and some of the things that our, our kids, they have some dreams of doing some things. I think our job is to tell them, here are the actual steps. I know that you've seen all the, the basketball player and the football player, but here are the steps that you need to take to make sure that you are getting to that. You know, there have been times where, you know, we, we'll give out the statistics, and, but we don't want to, 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 to kill their dream. Right. But we do want them to give them the, the right way of doing these things. So, so now I, I also just wanted to tell you all this thing as well. Um, this is the first one of these videos that we've done that I've been nervous with. And the reason I've been nervous is because we have to get this right. We have to get this right. We, we, we've seen a lot of things and not just here for just Garfield, but we've seen so many things that are happening to our children that we have to do something to get this thing right, to, to attack the problem and not just kind of be the folks who just kind of say, oh, this is happening out there. Oh, this is, we, we have to get this thing right. So where do we start to get this thing right? How do we approach this? You know, we are here right now. How do we get more folks to, to really understand that there is a need? And wh where do we start? That's the question, where do we start? Yeah, it, it starts with getting involved. You know, we, we say that a lot. You know, there's always campaigns, get involved, get involved. Your involvement is important, right? So it's showing up and being there. It, it's not about getting it perfect or getting it right. It, it starts with getting involved, being involved, showing up, being consistent uh, with showing up. 
and, and everything else will kind of work itself out. Um, you, you, we, we'll, we'll be able to learn from one another uh, as we're involved and other parents are involved on what needs to happen to uplift these kids because the urgency is we can lose a generation. Right. You, you, you know, um, I'll, I'll share this. There was a, uh, it, you know, there was an incident on a news where um, I used to do some work inside of the detention center where a young man stole an Amazon truck, went the wrong way on the highway, hit, killed the doctor. I get a phone call uh, from a, a lady I used to work with inside the detention center. She said, you know, we, we know that young man. We used to work with him. Um, you know, that, that breaks my heart. You know, that, that, that breaks my heart. And so being a father myself and, and having three boys, one older, um, we have to, we, we can't sit on the sidelines. It's just too much at stake. Lives will be lost if we don't. So. Yeah, I think, I think um, you know, one of the key cogs in the wheel of what you're saying is relationship. Um, a lot of our kids, man, you know, like I said, I got two older daughters, but I got a son at six. Um, but a lot of, a lot of the biggest thing they crave is, is relationship. You know, you playing ball, that's, that's relationship, you know what I mean? And because of the right relationships, then they're able to, you know, feel more comfortable. The guard goes down, so I can ask you some real questions, yeah. right? And then, then, then they can get some real answers to the things that maybe they can't ask mom about. Garfield, I think, has one of the highest, you know, populations of single moms in, in, in the county, you know what I mean? And so um, there's not a lot of places, especially for our young boys, to go to to be like, I got questions about this, you know. They, so they ask their homeboy, and they're not getting the right answer. You know what I mean? So having the ability to ask a uh, ask a man who's kind of been there, done that, and is willing to to pour into our students um, is, is, is absolutely just priceless because now we're giving back to the generation. Now we can avoid some of the other circumstances that we're seeing play out. Um, again, when we're consistent and when we're really making that that true investment. Um, I think it starts from the home and from what happens at home transfers to the school. Yep. One of the biggest fears I have is uh, my son, I, I have two boys and two girls. My 13-year-old um, son is my height. He not my size, but he's my height. He actually go to the middle school over there. Um, I just have the uh, fearful that I, um, every day, not every day that he leave, but um, as of recently, my biggest fear is him going to school or interacting with someone and, and then incidents, it just seems like more incidents and violence is happening every day, especially uh, in the area. And it, it probably is due to, and it probably is, it's due to the simple fact that the, the lack of the male figure, male figures in the household. And um, all it takes is even if um, I learned that, even if it isn't my child at the end of the day, that child can influence my child. So it's better for me to parent whoever it is around. I think for me, um, I believe in each one, teach one. So modeling, you know, the way you should be in front of our students, uh, especially our young men. Um, they see me, or I'll, I'll see them uh, empty handed, and I'll see a female teacher carrying boxes, and I'll go grab the boxes, and then they'll start to follow suit. You know, just trying to um, grow them into uh, men. Um, gentlemen, um, I, I, I tell them about my upbringing. I wasn't a perfect child. I needed some guidance. Um, I had my dad in the household, but there was times where, you know, I, I, I didn't make the best decisions. And I let them know, like, even when, you know, I, they're sitting in front of my desk and I have to consequence them or talk to them about um, something that they did, I let them know, like, yeah, I, I did something like that when I was in school. So, you know, I'm perfect, but I'm not perfect. Um, but, you know, these are some choices that you could have made to avoid, you know, those things from happening. Um, and so I just continue to just try to be the best, you know, that I can be in front of them. Um, on my way home, um, I don't listen to any music. I just reflect on the day. You know, what are some things that, that I could have done differently that I feel like I gave it my all? 
um, you know, to the children because believe it or not, we all know they, they watch us. They do. They watch us. So if you talk a certain way in front of them and they, they look up to you, then they try to talk like you, you know. So uh, it's about code switching, you know, letting them know that, you know, you can be who you are around your friends, but you here in school, you can't be that person. Now you have to be able to, to shift, shift your mindset, um, you know, when your education is involved. So all, all those things I think um, happen and occur because of one thing: presence. Like presence matters, man. Um, I think you said like the end result of um, some of the negative things we see happening in our community uh, with our young people is lack of presence, lack of a positive real, uh, male role model. You know, or and we all grew up. You know, we were at the park, whatever, and there was there was a dude that was like, "Yo, man, like, why are you doing that? You know, yeah. get, go to class or go home or whatever." Yeah. Um, that presence and that respect factor was there, and and there's, it's, it's lacking uh, today. So, I think that's why Top Dog is so important because it it creates presence um, in our schools, on in the park, whatever case may be. It creates presence so that then there's another layer that can be added after that. So that presence, I think, has to be the, the first start. Yeah, yeah, and then I think if we can create community and relationships with the parents, because, you know, parents, you know, they can be isolated as well, you know, and, and they'll stay isolated if, you know, they don't feel that, you know, hey, I'm not a good parent, I'm not getting it right, I'm making mistakes. So I think one of the things I think top, where Top Dog can really be great is, you know, really rallying the parents to say, hey, let, let's, let's parent together. Let's, let's be the village. Let's learn from one another. Let's learn from one another's mistakes. Let's grow together. Let's parent as a village, as a team. I think that'll have a, a tremendous, tremendous impact. So I'm, I'm, I'm telling the parents now, come and be involved. Men, come be involved. You don't have to be perfect. We want that. We will grow together in this so that we can have the impact that you guys are having. I love what you're doing. Just, just, hey, I'm coming to throw the football. I, I don't have a, an agenda. I don't have a program. I don't have a pro I'm just going to be there and do something that they like, which is throwing football. And it's attractive, guys. So, you know, I commend you. I commend Thank you in that. Yeah. I do uh, piggyback off y'all with the community thing because I, where I was, I, I was raised on St. Clair, uh, East 140th, but. Yeah, I was 105. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was, we, we grew up in one of those neighborhoods where it was a community where I knew my next door neighbor who was the name next door to them. And if we did anything, um, they reported it back to our parents, period. So I know what you mean by um, you can act whoever you, you can be whoever you want to be around your friends, but when it comes down to um, coming back home and coming back to the community, you you got to act accordingly. You can't just run around and do reckless and nonsense and stuff and think uh, no consequence or accountability comes with it. Because uh, our mother used to always have us the street light rule. We had to be home before the street light. Yeah, 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 man. But my mother worked at night, so even if we was, it would still be times we'll try to abuse it. And somebody, a neighbor, let her know, like, hey, they were still out here. You're supposed to be in the house. Or they said something. Yeah. Hey, you know, you're supposed to go home, you know what I'm saying, before your mother gets home. street light, bing. So we, I'm here. You gotta go home. Yeah. I remember riding that bike and pushing that thing so hard, trying to get home. See, see, I'm from the country. We didn't have the street light. We had something called a night light. It is one light in the back of your yard. If that light was on, and you are not sitting down in the house, it was going to be a problem. Right. And that, that was a real thing for us right there. So, so with the, the, this Top Dog initiative that we are putting together, we, we talked about this a little bit earlier, where I felt that we never, as a school district, really reached out to our male role models and said, hey, we want you to be a part of this. And what this is, is really welcoming folks to be a part of what we're trying to do for children. Because I promise you, everything that I'm attempting to do here, everything that we are attempting to do here, for children, and I really, really, uh, I'm very excited about this opportunity to to bring folks in who really care about kids. Because the folks who are going to show up are the folks who really care about children, are the folks who really want to see some something different happen, and to see that the outcomes are positive for our children. 
So this is an opportunity to not only just gather uh, male role models together, but also as a resource, as you stated, to help our other families who just need some assistance. We are even talked about doing professional development opportunities to, to really work with our volunteer and then allow our volunteer to then work with families. We need this to be something that is, is, is a revival of this community, is, is really bringing in something new, renewing everything that we're trying to do for our kids, renewing our purpose for this community, uh, renewing our individual purposes of, of what we're really here for. And for me, I really feel that I am here to help people realize that our children are the key to the success of our community. And I really, really believe that. For what we're trying to do with Top Dog, how do you feel that we can bring in more folks to, to really join in on this effort? What do you think that we should be trying to do? Yeah, I mean, just, just reaching out. I mean, I think there the, you can do it via, you know, a campaign of, you know, I don't know if you have a parent teacher, PTA. Yeah. Uh, you newly know, formed. Yeah, newly, newly formed. formed. Okay, yeah. uh, PTA is, a, is an important uh, vehicle to reach the parents. But letting them know specifically, this is a specific initiative where we're reaching out to the men and, 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 and to the single mothers. Um, you may have a, a, a grandfather or an uncle or a cousin or somebody that your son really looks up to. Invite them to come. It doesn't, it doesn't only have to stop with the dad. Just get somebody that you trust, that your son looks up to, that will be a part of this. And, and, and let's make the call and let's keep making a call. And hey, listen, we gotta get you guys brown tickets, men, to come on out. We'll do whatever we I have to. Whatever we gotta do. We'll do whatever we have to. You know, if we gotta send you to a San Antonio's game, we'll do, we'll do whatever. <laughs> we'll do whatever. Um, but, but yeah, let's each one reach one. I mean, the four of us, but then also uh, let's bombard our, our parents with with this information, letting them know this could be a game changer. Reach out to somebody that they know. Yeah, I think for me, you know, as a member of the faith community, um, you know, the, the church has to step up and the men in the church in particular have to step up as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, uh, you know, you all go at them old deacons, man, that you retire, got a nice little pension, you got some time on your hand, come to Top Dog, you know what I mean? This is some of those guys, you know, I think also, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of men, whether in the faith community, they're looking, they're looking for something to do. They're, they're looking for, for their hands to get busy doing something, right? Um, something positive. And so, you know, that's, that's like my, my, my reach is like, hey, I'm making phone calls and calling some of these guys like, hey, you your day off, you know, come, come be a part of this. I think um, when, you, when you think of an initiative like this uh, and you, you're thinking of the, the ramifications of it, it's like throwing a pebble in the water and there's, there's gonna be ripple effects. The ripple effects of something like this, something like this can have an impact from a kid that you were with from the kindergarten up to 12th grade. And they'll say, man, I remember when, when Mr. Rich used to tell me to get to class and, and the lessons he learned from, you know, so, so, so that, that's a great opportunity for you to impact the child from beginning to end um, and influence them in a positive way. And that, that'll be, you know, one of the key ways that I think um, you can reach out to a lot, of, a lot of men to be a part. Well, I know one thing that, um I always thought about that they could possibly do a host like a event night because kids and men love sports. So just how you bring your child and you and we all just sit around powwow, discuss things, man, and watch sports. Because I know kids, I, I love sports, which makes my uh, my son, Destin or whatever, he um he's more involved in and uh, he's in boxing now. He wants to do football and all that stuff next year. And I learned just all based off the interaction I have with him, he wants to do more instead of just uh, playing around. He really doesn't play his video game and all that stuff like that anymore. He's just he. It's a we have a boxing bag and stuff like that. And it basically is a grandfather bought him. So he comes home after he comes from the boys and girls club. He'll wash up. He'll do that for us. He can eat. And he'll go to sleep. But I uh, learned. Just with us uh, finding something like that, maybe a sports night where, like I said, yeah. the father, uncle, grandfather can come out with the child and then we can sit around as a community and figure out ideas on how to make things better. I like that a lot. I, th I think we're gonna make that happen right there. <laughs> I, th I like that a lot because that's, that's an opportunity to, 
to do some things that are uh, that are consistent with what we're trying to do in the building as well. Just build relationships with our children, to build, build relationships with our families in this community as well. And that's something that, and you know, we have to have a little bit of food there too. Right? You, got, you, got, you, got, you got to have some food. You got to. Wings yeah. or something up there. Yeah, yeah, you, you got to have a lot of bit of food. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> make that happen though. I could, while you were saying it, I could see it. I could see it. So so we can definitely make something like that happen, man. Just another opportunity to, to bring folks together. And those things, you know, it's not only going to be just kind of a one thing that's going to solve all our problems. It's that consistency we were talking about, that we're consistently trying to engage our children, consistently trying to engage our families, and we're consistently trying to do our best. And that is where we really start making some moves and taking care of, of this community. So, so the things we're trying to do with Top Dog, what is your vision? What do you see in the next five years? If we get this thing right, what do you see that can happen in the next five years, in the next 10 years? Next year, if we get this thing right, starting right now, what do you see in the future? The young pups that we're pouring into, they become Top Dogs, right? You know, they, they, they come in and now they take the mantle and this is spreading, right? And, and so, and it's getting wider and more people are getting impacted. And now we're, you know, young ladies, they're doing their thing. So mothers are doing stuff with daughters. And, and, and so this is just spreading to where it's having such an impact to where our environments look totally different. You know, people are in school, they're respecting one another, they're helping one another, they're engaged in their studies. They have dreams and visions of what they wanna do with their lives. Um, and that is the predominant thing that's going on in the school. You know, absenteeism shrinks, you know, you know what I mean? Kids are coming to school. We, we start to see those percentages, percentages drop and you know, this becomes a beacon, beacon for other schools to emulate and duplicate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's dope. I think, I think for me, I, I, I just envision, um, you know, men, uh, you got the hoodie, you got the hat, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, and, you know, being on watch, you know, the, the top dog crew at the middle school communicates with the top dog crew at the high school, you know, let's be on the lookout for this, that, and the third. Um, I envision, um, you know, it, it, it blossoming into now there's the Top Dog Mentoring Group or, you know, Top Dog After School Activity Council or whatever the case may be. And so it, it really takes on a life of its own um, and it's a rallying point for, for our community um, so that, you know, people know, hey, you know, when we talk to Top Dog about XYZ issue um, we're concerning our, our young people, um, I, really, I really see it being a, a, a launching point for, uh, you, you use the word revival and that's you know, as a preacher, I love that word, but um, but I really see it being a revival, uh, being a launching point for a revival um, amongst our young people. You know, it, it, it has to start somewhere, like I said, and all it takes is, is the foundation being settled and firm in order for everything else to grow. So I really see it being a, a firm foundation as we, as we move forward. I just um, envision a better community, a better environment, yep. more family oriented, and um, for the, future generation that, that positivity and that hope and faith we will be looking forward to. I think uh, for myself, so back in September we had uh, our father's walk and it was bumper to bumper. Uh, I mean, men, dads, uncles, granddads, you name it. So that's a one time event, you know, if, if it can look like that daily or, or, or how, however frequent we, we plan to meet or, or gather um, because they're there, they're out there. We know they're out there, I've seen them. Um, so just um, continuing to uh, persevere and let, uh, let people know. Uh, my, my staff thought I was crazy because I was excited to do car duty. I'm like, I go out, do you wanna go outside in the cold and rain? I get to see every parent that pull in that parking lot. Talk to them um, and encourage them because I see the men out there I just don't see them in the school. So now make it a push to um, talk to them and say, hey, we got these good things going on in the building and you know, we need you. Um, definitely delivering that message. Um, the Village Church is a church that believes in bridging the gap between um, mental health and the gospel. And so, you know, we, we, we believe that we believe that people can be healed by having 
uh, uh, a faith um, faith-based community as well as uh, a mental health community uh, that's, that supports them. And so um, my wife is a mental health uh, therapist. Our, our practice is called the Healing Care Counseling. And, you know, we work with parents, students, um, and, you know, while it's a great opportunity for people to also understand the challenges they have from a mental health perspective, they can also build a foundation in faith at the same time. Um, on Thursday evenings, we host um, what's called Tribe Night. Um, it's where all of our young people come and hang out um, and, you know, they play games, they get a faith-based lesson, all that kind of stuff, while the adults get to hear me preach um, and we, or we do Bible study, wherever the case may be. And it's really been impactful from the standpoint of, you know, kids go home fed, mom and dad goes home fed, because we actually like, literally feed them, like we're going to eat, you know, good food, but they're going to eat some practical spiritual food as well. So there's a, there's a, a trade-off there. So, you know, it's really been awesome um, to see um, some of the kids in our community come out, hang out with us, um, and they're like, yo, when, when's the next one? When can we come, when we come back? Um, and it's really been uh, really uh, invigorating for us. And, you know, as a, as a man of faith, I believe my role doesn't just uh, reside within the church. Like, we have to be in the community, um, outside of the four walls. And so I literally don't have a building right now, but my goal is to still be the church, and that is, that's what we've been focusing on. I think that's, I think that's really, really good. Um, I've been doing this for education 24 years now, and there are more and more kids that I'm seeing that have mental health. Um, issues is going on that I didn't see, you know, years ago. Um, and then um, a, a lot of times you meet, you know, parents and things like that, and that the whole structure needs some support. So that's actually that's phenomenal. What, what sorry, what you're doing to um, enhance that, um, Dr. Reynolds? You mentioned uh, people working with like our families and things like that. One thing I've also seen is parents. Our parents are getting younger younger and younger, and there's a lot of them are still kids themselves, still growing up. So I'm um, looking forward to doing this work to hopefully get them some professional development, um, parenting classes, you know, things like that, um, because it don't just stop in the school or in the church. Like you said, it's the whole community's full circle. So, so I just want to take this moment just to thank you gentlemen for even being here. And you were able to, to articulate the things that you want for this community, for our children. And it, it, it showed your heart. It showed your heart and it showed your love for our children. So I'm very thankful that you are here. I'm thankful that you are a part of this. And I am very thankful for Ms. Gina Wilson, who developed this program and connected with all of you and will be connecting with other uh, men in this community. So if there are other men who want to be a part of this, you can contact Ms. Gina Wilson. She'll be able to, to go ahead and, and get you connected with this group. And I, again, I am very, very thankful for you all. And uh, I really see great things happening in this community based off of this work that we're trying to do for our children. So thank you all. Thank you, and we want to thank you for, oh, for stepping into, into this and, and kind of galvanizing us, you and Gina. Uh, we love the work that she's doing. The Village has partnered with her on a couple initiatives already. So yeah, yeah, so we can thank you for letting us be a part of it. Thank you all. Thank you to everyone who took a moment out of their time to, to view this, this session. We are very, very thankful for these men who are who volunteered their time to come in to talk to you about the initiative that we're taking, that's taking place here in Garfield High City Schools. But this is all about the community coming together because it really is about every child, every day, together. Go Bulldogs.